Now we will go in details, detail of the liver lobular structure. The liver parenchyma and its arrangement of the hepatocytes can be explained in three ways. We should explain it in reference to classic lobule which I mentioned previously. Number two, we will explain it in reference to portal lobule. Another way to look at the liver architecture and still one more way to look at the architectural and functional aspect of the liver is when you talk about hepatic acinus. Right, I will first draw the classic lobule, right, three or four of them, then I will explain other two types as well. When we talk about the classic lobule, Okay, I think I need to make it a little bit smaller. It has gone beyond my board. How many lobules are there in your liver? Many. Many mean how many? Yes. Too many. Too many, okay. I think you are millionaire as far as these lobules are concerned. All right? You have millions of these. hepatic lobules. These structures which I am drawing, these are basically classic lobules. Right, now you will tell me the structures. This is a branch from hepatic artery, artery yes, and uh, one branch should be present at every corner of this hexagonal structure which is classic lobule and this is right hepatic artery and what is this branch at every corner portal vein is it right from the portal vein and here we have bile drainage, right? So, bile duct. Yeah. I've changed the color scheme a little bit and this is now your bile duct. Right? And of course, you remember there were lymphatics also here. These are lymphatics. Oh, I don't know this lobule is underserved. What's wrong with it? I should put here portal. And yes, please. What else we need to put? Bile duct. So this is portal triad. But actually there is always lymphatics also in this area. Now you will tell me what is this in the center? Central vein. Right? And now we will come back to our arrangement. What was from here? Yes, sinusoids, right? I will just draw two sinusoids. Now exactly how is the structure of sinusoids. Sinusoids are made of endothelial cells, but these endothelial cells are not making a continuous lining. They are discontinuous. And these endothelial cells are having fenestrations. These endothelial cells are having fenestrations. So these are, sinusoids are wide diameter capillaries, which are ex extending from the outer part of the classic lobule to the inner central vein and they are lined by endothelial cells, but endothelial cells are not completely lining, yes, there are very, very big gaps. 
and even within the endothelial cells there are very large fenestrations and these fenestrations are diaphragm plus there what is this basal lamina even basal lamina is discontinuous and it has very very big gaps and it is not complete then another very important aspect of this is that there are very special type of cells here which are called kuffer cells what are these kuffer cells these are derived from circulating monocytes or macrophages right so these are fixed kuffer cells are in fact the fixed macrophages right present into liver sinusoids and along with the endothelial cells kuffer cells are also lining the sinusoids so that when blood is moving from the periphery to the center uh, components of the blood are freely exposed to the kuffer cells so kuffer cells can you know blood is also coming from the spleen if there are fragments of the broken rbcs they will be removed by the kuffer cells am i clear so kuffer cells are present filtering whatever toxins or bacteria or fragments of the rbcs are passing from portal blood right or uh, through the sinusoidal blood any question up to this then here were your hepatocytes right hepatocytes are large cells they are about 20 to 30 microns right 20 to 30 micron meter these are polyhedral cells or with multiple faces the you have to remember one face of the hepatocyte is towards the blood another face is towards the biliary canalicular system if you really want to know exactly how hepatocytes are and what is their relationship with the bile drainage system let me make two hepatocytes here now this is their nucleus right usually there is a large nucleus in the center of the hepatocytes but as your age increases number of nucleus in the hepatocytes may increase right and this was the sinusoidal system so naturally this part of the this face of the hepatocyte is exposed to the components of plasma is that right this face which is towards the face uh, space of dessay this has multiple micro villi to increase its surface area right surface area right another thing which is very important that biliary canaliculi are basically a gap between the cell they are not suppose this is one cell membrane going this is another cell membrane going and these cell membranes become separate from each other and now they go down so this is biliary canaliculi actually biliary canaliculi is not lined by any special cells these are just gaps grooves present in between the two hepatocytes it's worth repeating Bil biliary drainage system does not start as very special duct the biliary canaliculi start as a gap or space or the grooves present in between the two hepatocyte membranes is that right and then what is there a special what are the tight junctions here is that right so basically bile is drained from these cells up to this side and then this tunnel is going in between many many cells is that right so here i have shown it in a very wide way but actually the cells should be touching each other and in between them a very fine tun tunnel is moving through is that right am i clear no problem right now these cell membranes are specialized in a different way for example the membrane of the cell which is facing to the space of dessa right it has different transporter systems and it has different type of secretory system and the membrane which is facing towards the biliary canaliculi it has also transporter membranes and proteins but they are different than the 
part of the membrane which is facing to the space of DC. For example, you know bilirubin when RBCs break down and hemoglobin break down, one of the breakdown product of the R hemoglobin is bilirubin. Bilirubin is from the, you know a lot of RBCs break down into spleen. From there bilirubin come into blood, right? And bilirubin is reaching, suppose I make this, bilirubin is coming here. This is a bilirubin molecule. Through the sinusoidal system, bilirubin molecule will come to the space of DC. Then this surface of the cell, this surface of the cell has the transporter which will take up the bilirubin to the cell. I'm going to tell you how the hepatocyte work. Just one example. Then bilirubin will go in, right? When bilirubin is brought here, it is now after that, this is conjugated with glucuronic acid. Now this glucuronic acid, this is glucuronic acid, which is added to the bilirubin, right, by the hepatocyte machinery. Then conjugated bilirubin is actively secreted into where? Bilary canaliculi. You are understanding? So it means that hepatocyte membrane which is facing to the space of DC, it should have the transporter to transport the bilirubin from space of DC to the cell. And once bilirubin gets conjugated with glucuronic acid, then it cannot go back. Most of it will go to the bilirubin canaliculi because those transporter protein which can transfer the bilirubin from the hepatocyte to the bilirubin channel or bilirubin canaliculi, they are only present in this part of the membrane. Right? And there are so many other examples. Right? That, for example, from here we can take up many drugs in from the blood and then drugs are modified and then some in some cases of the drugs their metabolites are actively secreted into where bilirubin canaliculus system and in this case these metabolites will eventually go to GIT and lost into fecal matter but there are other drugs those drugs are taken from the space of DC into this cell they are conjugated and thrown back to the blood so they will be lost into urine you are understanding? The point by these examples I'm trying to put in your mind is that different phases of the hepatocytes are specialized in doing different functions. That is why when you will study pharmacology, you will learn the few drugs or their metabolites are lost in fecal matter. The other drugs, their metabolites are lost into yeah. urine because liver is one of the major, uh, you can say, organ which deals with drugs and uh, conjugating the drug or changing the drugs, we call it biotransformation, right? And it depends on the liver cell that throwing that modified metabolites of the drug into bilirubin canaliculi or throwing it back to the space of DC and going to the blood. Am I clear? No problem. Now, this is the exact position of the bilirubin canalicular system, right? Another thing which is very important, that hepatocyte cells are having lot of mitochondria, 800 to 1000 mitochondria present per cell. They are ha having lot of lysosomes. They have lo having lot of peroxisome. You know they have to destroy all the, some bacteria which may be wrongly coming from GIT to the portal blood. So hepatocytes should take them and kuffer cells should take them and destroy them. Then from the GIT if the toxic substances are coming, right, they should be catabolized in hepatocytes. So they have lot of lysosomes. They have lot of paroxysomes, then they have lot of, lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum and smooth endoplasmic reticulum. With smooth endoplasmic reticulum, they are producing the lipids. They are catabolizing the estrogens, progesterone, testosterone, uh, substances like that. And with the rough endoplasmic reticulum, these cells are synthesizing lot of plasma proteins, right? From the, this side, they will be taking up the amino acids, then they will synthesize the plasma proteins like albumins and then they will throw them back to the space of DC so that they become the part of the blood. Okay. Am I clear? So, and another very, very rather extremely important thing, in the space of DC here, there is a very special type of cell. This cell is extremely important, especially in pathological conditions. Physiologically, this cell is acting as a fat, fat storing cell or vitamin A storing cell. You know vitamin A is lipid soluble? Am I right or wrong? 